Well, here we are again, and I'm so glad to be with you, even though I can't see you through the camera. Okay, let me show you our project for today. This is different. We are not underwater this time. I don't know if any of you have seen these, but probably some of you have. These are called pussy willows, and they're these little willow trees that grow where it's kind of like wetland. I was I was going to go to uh, Mr. Martinez's, walk around by his, what is that, by his lake and see if I could find any. But they're little, these are the little buds and they're real soft and gray, like little kitty cats. I guess that's why they call them pussy willows. And then, see these right here? Can you see these little, these are called catkins. So we're going to do the painting, then we're going to, we'll dry it, then we'll paint on top, because this is going to be layers, and then we'll cut out our little um, buds out of paper and we'll glue them on. So this is called mixed medium because you're using a lot of different things. We're painting, we're gluing with paper, and we're going to, we're going to trace around it. Okay, so I'm going to put my paper down. I have paper. And I'm going to tape it because I like it. I like the looks. It's totally optional. Put it on your clothes first. That really did help last time we put it on our clothes, that it didn't rip the paper when we took the tape off. That was good. I'm using the bumpy side up of my paper because I like all that extra texture, but you decide which one you want to do. Oh, on my clothes, i got to remember. Oop, this one's a little short. Mm. you got to watch it. I'll just put an extra piece up top. And that'll be fine. sure it's long enough. Put it on your clothes. This just gets some of the fuzzy stuff from your clothing on it so it doesn't stick so hard. So let's go over our supplies. I have water and I'm going to be using two brushes. No, I, I'm just going to use one brush today. I'm just going to use my big brush. That's going to work best for me, but if you want to use a smaller one also, you may. I have this. I'm going to be using glue. Here's my scissors. My black pen. I'm not going to use the pencil. Not today. Here's my watercolor paints. I have a couple crayons. I have my tissues, my um, paper towels, um, my tissues. These are tissues, like Kleenex tissues. And then I have a piece of paper that I cut out of some of the paper we use to start fires with. As long as your paper has words printed on it, that's fine. It can be some an old book your parents are going to throw away or whatever your parents have around. They'll help you find it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is paint, and this is going to be wet on wet. Where you get your paper wet, and then we're going to paint it on. Now the techniques we're going to use to, to paint, I call the three P's. This is the way you use your brush. You push it, you push your brush, you can do this when it's wet on wet. You can pull your brush. There's push your brush. Or you can pat your brush. And this will make different effects. So try to use all three of them when we paint our background. Can you see the white on there? What I did there was called a lift off. And we will get to that after we paint our wet on wet, okay? 
So now I'm going to take my crayons and I'm going to I'm going to draw my sun in here. And I'm going to put it not exactly in the middle, over to the side, either side that you want because it's a little more interesting. I'm going to put it right here. Now this is a wax resist, you remember that. The wax isn't going to, the, the wax is going to not, it's going to keep the paint from coloring it. So, there it is. If you want to use two colors on it, you may. I'm going to put another, I can't really see, see it, but there's two colors. About that big will look good for this size sheet of paper. Okay. Now for the wet on wet, which is fun. I'm going to use my blues I have right here. And then later, when we do the branches, we'll be using our browns. They're over here. And maybe we use a little black, too, for those little catkins. All right, so I'm going to just get the, about the top half of my paper wet, or a section of the paper. I'll just do it in sections so it doesn't dry too quickly. So you have to get your brush wet, and then get your paper wet. And I'm not worried if I get any water on my sun, because it's not going to stick when I start painting. Okay, I'm going to get this up top part done. And then, when I put my paint in, it's going to be pretty wet, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to push my brush. See what happens when you push your brush? Push it. Then I'll pull my brush. Oh, See, that's a little different when you pull it. And now, I'm going to pat my brush. See those three different ways you can make strokes with your brush? If you're painting and it's pretty dry, you would really want to be careful trying to push your brush. It's mostly for when it's a little wetter. Now I have different colors here because I think that's interesting. And skies are like that. Do you ever look at the sky and just think, that is such a beautiful color. God made that so pretty. All right. So I've got that section is painted. I did it pretty quickly. I'm going to get this wet. I still have some blue on my brush in my water, but that's really okay because I'm painting blue anyways. The main idea is to do it pretty quickly so it doesn't dry. Then we'll use Mom's hair dryer. She's so kind to let us use it. And we are so careful with it. All right. I'm going to push my brush. It's kind of fun to push my brush. And I'm going to pull my brush. Pull it. I can make streaks. And I'm going to pat my brush. That makes kind of thicker colors, doesn't it? This is looking great. I like all the different colors because sometimes when you look at the sky, it's a lot of different colors. So beautiful. Whoops. Now for more water. This last little section. I can do it in sections because it is, it is wet on wet. And it's all blue. Oh, maybe I'll put a little pearl in there. That would be fun. Ooh, that was different some over here. I can, ooh, see it looks good if I dab it. I can even go back up here and dab them on. Looks good, doesn't it? All right, here we go. I'm dabbing, I'm patting, I'm pushing, I'm pulling. I can do it any direction. Ooh, now we're going to do a lift off. Isn't that what I called it? Lift off? Yes, lift off. It kind of sounds like an airplane going to lift off. We're going to take our tissue. Bad, you can't leave your brush in the water like that. That's not good. OK, 
Okay, take your tissue and kind of crumple it up. And I'm going to dab my tissue on my wet paint and it's going to lift off some of the colors of the paint. When I do it though, I'm going to be turning my wrist like this because I want them to be different. I don't want them to look like the same row. So here I am. This is going to make clouds. Oh, I love this. You see that? That is so pretty. Okay. So these pussy willows, it's kind of like we're on the ground and we're looking up towards the sky. See all the textures just from this little lift off technique? Okay, we'll put that to the side. Now we're ready for, for um, drying. We're gonna dry it. All right. Oh. I'm going to dry the whole thing until it's not wet. This is really a fun little project. It makes me think of spring and being outside. Oh, that's so interesting. I like that. And did you notice how this just stayed just like that? A little tiny color got right there where the crayon didn't stick. All right, I'm still gonna use my brown brush, my big brush. I'm going to use browns. Now, even though this brush is big, if I just use the tip of it and don't press super hard like that on its belly i can make i can make uh thinner lines the lines you make depends on how hard you push your brush so i'm getting some water on here remember i told you that your paint your little paint cakes they're for you to mix colors with they don't have to be just the color in there you can mix them there in your box in your, on your little paint box, or you can have a little palette. Mine doesn't have a palette, so I use this thing to get the color I want. Or maybe I'll just try putting a little of this black in it, just for fun. I love to mix colors. See how that changed it? Okay, so I dabbed it, and I'm kind of dabbing it so it's going to make a nice little point. I'm going to start at the bottom. I have three on here and they're kind of spaced apart because we need space for the pussy willows themselves. So don't make them too close together. If, if you do, it'll be all right, but it's a little harder to put those little buds on if you do. Okay, I'm starting. I like to start at the bottom when I paint branches. I'm holding my brush up pretty straight. I'm not going to go on the sun because it won't stick if I do. So when I first start, I'm going to press a little harder at the bottom than at the top because branches get thinner at the top. Have you noticed that? Okay, so here I am. And if I have to go back and reload my brush, that's okay. There's one. That looks good. A little fatter there. More water. More color. More black. All right. See how I dab? I don't grind like that. That's a sure way to wreck your brush. All right. This one's going to come over here. I'm going to make him kind of go up there. See how I'm holding my brush straight up? I'm going to make this a little fatter. Okay, and I'm going to do one more. Then we're going to put some little stems on it. And this one's going to go over here. 
I'm going to make them curve back in just for something different. There. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to make some little stems for my catkin buds to stick on. So I'm going to just barely point right there on one side. Then I'm going to come down over here. Now leave room for your buds. Just put one there. I think I'll put one here. It's not very big. All right. I'm going to go up here because there's room. I want to make sure I have room. And there's one right there. I just point the tip of my brush right there. All right. This is fun. I like it. There's one. There's one. And I'll put this little catkin down there. See how they're kind of on the opposite sides. All right. I think I'm done painting for now. Wash my brush carefully. You take good care of your brushes. They will last you for years. And years and years. Okay, I'm going to give it the test. Remember how you give it the test? See if it's in, oh, my brush is not clean. See, that's a good test. I dab it on one side, I dab it on another. Never grinding my brush. You know when you get bigger and you're, you, um, you boys, say you're going to go to work and you have hammers and saws and things, you're going to have to take good care of your tools. So this is what we do here. We're taking good care of our tools. All right, I'm going to put this right here. I think I'm going to give it a smidge of a dry, just a smidge. Just to make sure. It looks pretty dry already. should do it. Now for the buds. So I'm going to take, I'm going to do this in strips, then I'm going to fold it and try to cut out a bunch at once because I probably need about, I don't know, a dozen or so. And I'm not going to cut out each one by itself. I don't need to do that. I'm going to cut off this, cut off this white part. So I'm going to fold it like a fan. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Just like a fan. I can't make it too thick because if I get it too thick, it's too hard to cut. So I think, I don't know, maybe it had six, six folds, I think. So I'm going to cut out these ovals like this. I'm going to do it over here. This will be my little trash. I don't want to get them too big. This, these look a little big. I think they are. I'm going to make them just a little smaller. Because these are buds. It is a wonderful time of year. It's spring. The Lord makes things new. We're blessed to have seasons. You know he made that promise to Noah after the flood? He told him from now on they're every you're gonna have seasons. Summer or spring is gonna follow winter, summer's gonna follow spring, autumn, winter, until the end of the earth. And it's something we look forward to. Because there's special things about every season. Alright, I need more. Cut this off. Do the fan treatment. The way these videos are made, it's really great because you can stop it if you need to catch up. And that is good. Oh no. <laughs> My iPad is ringing. Alright. I don't think I got as many folds that time. I'm going to cut this. This takes a little time to do, but it's worth it because we're going to get something really special. Now, I'm not going to 
I'm, I'm not going to put, put a little bud on all of them. I'm going to save some space for my catkins. They're so cute. Oops. Cut off that. Do the fan. This is the last one I'm going to do, I think. Because it's probably enough. This is pretty easy. All of you know how to do fans. I've seen you do fans. Though you third graders. All right, here they are. Okay. Now I'll leave my trash right there. Now we're ready to glue and a word about gluing that I tell all the students. You open your glue, make sure it'll come out, all right? Try it over here. Oh, don't tell me I got one that didn't work. That's not good. Ah, oh, yes. Now, with your glue, you use it like a pencil. Some people like to hold it up in the air like this and squeeze and hope it lands in the right place and that's how they get it all over their shoes or their clothes. You, it's easier if you hold it like a pencil and you don't have to squeeze really hard because you don't need a huge glob. A little bit is really good. So see that right there? I'm going to put it on my paper because it's easier to put it on my paper than it is to hold one of these little buds and put it on. I'm going to put it right there. All right, let's glue these on and make sure you leave a spot for your little catkin. You want to have a catkin on each branch. I'm going to put one here, so I'm not going to put any paper on there. I'm going to leave it empty because we're going to paint them. All right. Some of these are kind of fattish. I think they're too fat. Just put a little dabble, do you? Did you ever hear that? A little dabble, do you? Right there. These are, this is really good for us to learn how to do things very carefully with our fingers. It's called motor skills. All right, I put him at the top. Some of mine are too round. I'm going to have to cut them smaller. I'm going to put one here. Just a little round oval. See, all the plants have been sleeping during the winter. And now that the weather's getting warm, they're waking up. And they're going to bloom and make seeds. Okay, no, these are skinnier. I'll use my skinnier ones. I'm going to, let's see, if I have my catkin there, I think I'm going to leave this, I'm going to leave this one right here for my catkin. And i got to remember not to glue it. I'll put some glue in two places because I think I can do it kind of fast. There. And there. Some of these are too round, I think. All right, I'm going to put my cat in here. So I'll put this one here. This looks good. Almost done. Okay, this one, I'm going to put my cat in right there. So, I'm just going to get this one. I'm going to skip that. Put this there. And here. I think this is my last one. I think. Don't look at it. And I left room. Oh, I did. I left room for three. Oh, very good. All right. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is... See these little brown spots right there at the end where they 
the buds kind of come out from the branch. I'm going to be painting some of those on to make them look a little more real. So I'm going to do that. Still, I can use my big brush. Now, look at this. My paint I was using is dry. But because the neat thing about watercolors is even if it's dry, you can just put water in it and it comes alive again. Now you can make more paint if you need to. You might. You might make some more. But um, that's why it's okay if you, sometimes you just leave some some dried up paint on your paper in your paint palette in your paint box because you can reuse it. Okay, so I'm just going to do this up here, just kind of like that. Nothing perfect. See, I'm just, I'm dabbing. See that? Dabbing, dabbing. Dabbing over here. Down here. This just makes it seem like it's a little more real. And if your little branches look too skinny, your little sticks there, you can make them better. Whatever you think looks good. So I think this one needs to be a little better. Do this one. Make some brown water. Start up here. I kind of start at the top and work my way down so then I don't put my hand on it and smear the paint. You've probably discovered that. See, there's a lot of things you learn when you just do things like this. Make that a little bigger. Kind of like it's the outer shell of the bud. Okay, did I get them all? I think I did. <gasps> nope, I missed this one. It's always good to check. Okay. Now, see, some of them are kind of pointing sideways. That's okay. All right. So now I'm going to do a little bit of paint for the outside of the bud. I just made some whitish, kind of whitish gray, just to cover it up so it doesn't look like you could read the word. It says sitting because they don't really have words on them. I have to use this white over here because my little paints here don't really have any. So let me get some white. Now remember, if you're going to make gray, you don't start with a whole lot of black and try to add white because you'd use up all your white. You, you start with your lightest color. If you're going to make a darker color and then you just get a tiny tad like that and you bring it over and you mix it in there. See that? Okay, I'm going to try it on here, give it a little test. Mm, it's a little dark. See, even though I was really careful, it got pretty dark. Okay, I'm going to just paint them. Oh yes, I like that. Because they, when you see them growing, they are kind of grayish. See how we're mixing up our different mediums? Painting, cutting, wax resist, collage. That's what this is when you add all kinds of different papers and things on your work. Collage, which is one of my favorites because it's just so many fun things. A little grayer, but that's okay. I kind of want a little whiter. Get some more white. Okay. There they are. That looks pretty good to me. I like that. Now for the kitty cats, or the catkins. I'm going to take some black. You're probably going to like this part more black. I'm going to mix it with this white right here. Then I'm going to 
You can probably use your pointer finger, but I'm going to use my tiny finger. I'm going to put it in there. Get some paint on. I'm going to use my finger as my paintbrush. And I'm going to see. I hope it turns out good. Oh, I think I need to do a little more. Can you see that? Uh -huh. That is my catkin. I don't want them too dark, but I don't want them too light either. You've got to be able to see them. You can finger paint. That's what we're doing now. We're finger painting. Oh, that was a good one. One more. Turn your page if you need to. Or, you know what, if it's not working, when you press your finger, you can paint your finger like that. That's all, that'll work too. Oh yes, that's the best one yet. Maybe I'll go over this again, just a little. Make them a little bigger. All right. I guess I better wash my fingers. It's okay if we get them in here. We'll dry them on the paper towel. I don't mind getting messy when I paint. Oh, thank you very much. My helpers. Now, for the ears. This is when you kind of have to be careful. I think I'm going to wash my brush, my big brush, and set it aside. Oops. That's pretty good. And I think I'm going to use my little brush. I think I can do my, I think I can do the ears with my little brush. And some of them are curling. That looks good. I like that. Okay. Here's my little brush. Like this. Getting wet. See if I can get some of this paint. Maybe a little darker. Oh. Boy, a little brush is really different than a big brush, isn't it? You don't get near as much paint. Get a little more white. Over on the edge. Okay, so I'm going to try to just paint a little teeny tiny triangle. Whoops. For the ears. Oh yeah, perfect. Perfect! Look at that, they're so cute! starting to look like a kitty. And we'll touch him up with a pen. Mm. Maybe if you could take a walk with your mom and dad, you can find some of these. Take a picture of them. Send them to me. Okay. I think I need one more dry, but I better do a little cleanup first because everything's going to fly away. Get this out of the way. Hold this. I'm going to put this to the side. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we could have a big mess here, like a snowstorm. All right, so... I have my kitties ready, and these are curling. That makes me happy. I like that because everything isn't just flat. All right, let's give it a quick dry. Ooh, I'm glad I cleaned up. That texture in the background does make you think of skies and clouds, doesn't it? All right. My kitties are ready. And I'm going to try this pen. I think it's better than the last one I had. Okay, so. I'm going to try to make it a little darker like on the inside of his ears. Give him a little depth. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Though some kitties are pink in there. These are black. Okay, now I'm going to give him his eyes. Oh, cute. 
They're starting to come alive, aren't they? And the kitties have little noses, you know, with their little muzzles that go like that. <laughs> you can tell it's a kitty now. A happy little kitty. And needs whiskers. I'm just gonna give him three. My pen is a little leaky, but it's thin. And you know what we could do? A bed if we wanted to. We could give him a tail. Are we brave enough to give him a tail? Probably wouldn't hurt. I'm gonna give him a curvy tail up here. Maybe I should paint it though. Okay, I think I'm done with my pen. I need to do some touch up though. I need my tiny brush. Oh, thank you. The servants are here. Serving and helping. I'm gonna make some of that brownish black because I wanna make it look like the kitty is coming out of a bud. Blacky brown. It's amazing how many colors of brown there are. And black. Yeah, see I want to, I just want to get that a little fatter. Maybe it's a little dark. I don't want him just there. It's look like a marshmallow on a stick. Um, I have a fatter, little fatter bud. There's this one with more color. Well, I can... Did I go for a tail? With gray? I'd have to make it gray. Is it like this gray maybe? I don't want any brown. I better try it on something. Nope, it's not quite the right color. Get some white. Too white. Get some black with it. I'm going to give him a little curved tail. I think I'll just do it on this one. See how it looks. What do you think? Maybe I just won't do it on the other ones. I'll just do it on the one. Okay. Now, I think we need one more dry. This will be the last dry. It's fun when you do things and you just go slow and discover little things. Remember what we talked about in the last, uh, our first class, we talked about how water can be like a paint. You know how you can thin down your color and stuff. You got, with watercolors, you have to learn how to, um, how much paint to use, whether to use too much. You could use too much or not enough. Okay, I'm gonna dry these little kittens. My ink is shiny. Can you see that? How shiny it is? There's a shiny spot right there. Okay. Now, for our very last step, we're going to outline these. See how it makes it really stand out? when you outline them with the black. So we'll do that. Kind of like we did to that little octopus and it made him just look really better. Gave him a lot more contrast. Okay, so first I'm gonna start with my circle, but I can't go right on the wax because it's not gonna write on the wax. To go around the edge, right on the edge. There, that looks good. Now I think I'll just do the branches. But when I get to a stem, and I get to one of the buds, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to just keep going straight because this is part of it here. 
keep going down. If I go off, it's okay. There. I'll go down to the bottom. Oops. I'll start right here. Ooh, that's a skinny spot. Okay, this is like where the branches or where the, the little buds opened. We'll come back and do the buds. We'll do it all and it'll look really good. And then we'll be done. Actually, you know what? I should have started over here and worked this way so I didn't smear it. So I'm going to have to be turning my paper. See, you learn things like that as you do things. But I can start right here. I'm really careful. I'm not laying my hand on my paper. Otherwise, I will smear that ink. Tracing. See how I'm holding my hand away? And I'm going to have to turn my paper next. I can hold it away because my hand is bigger than yours, so watch out. Down to the kitty with the tail. All right, now I am going to turn my paper. I'm going to do the part that's furthest away from my hand, just so I can be careful and not smear. Do the upper part, then I'll do the lower part. Almost done. There it is. Ooh, the last bud. The last bud. Now, well, since I'm over here, I'll just do this. I'm going to go around the edge of my buds. Remember what I told you? Sometimes it's easier to just pull it towards you than it is to push it. I always notice that when I try to push. Ooh, this one's going to be good because I can pull it. Alrighty. Does this project seem long to you? I don't know. Almost done. See, I can pull my pen easier than I can push it. Alright, I'm going to turn it. Be careful where you lay your hand. So you don't smear your work. Right here. Ooh. This is the last one on this branch. So if I'm going to come back, maybe I want to do some things to the kitty. And just fix it up a tiny bit. Yeah, I think I want to outline it a little. Okay, here I am. The last one down here. The bottom one. And over here. I'm going to turn my paper one more time. However it works for you. Oh, I missed one. I didn't know that. Okay. There's one more. Now when you're finished, you've got to really look it over. And make sure you've got it all. Now you know what I'm going to do for the kids? I think I'm just going to lightly outline their sides just a little. I don't know that I'm going to go ahead and outline their ears, though you could if you wanted. I think I'm just going to do it this way. One last Kit Kat. That's what I call my cat, Kit Kat. This one kind of looks like a mouse, don't you think? Okay. Done. Done, done. When I put my pens away, Put the lids on and then I always put them with the ink, with the point down 
because then gravity pulls the ink down and I go to use it and there's plenty of ink there. Okay, so here we are. Another finished project. This was fun. I liked it. Uh-oh. Now what do we have here? Ooh, I'm going to have to be careful. Oh, I got it. Oh, yay. Now see, if I had just gone grip like that, I might not have seen that. There, that looked good. And then I'll take this one off here. Oops. Ew, things are kind of ripping funny. Okay, this way. Remember, I'm careful when I do this. I don't really yank it. Now look right there. It kind of bled under there, but that's okay. I don't mind. Ooh, it bled there too. That's because I probably didn't rub it down good enough. You gotta be careful to rub it down, but it's okay. Interesting. Sometimes your mistakes turn out to be some of the best things that you do. Does that ever happen to you? The main thing is we have fun. Oh, one more place. Ooh. Oh, and there it is. I think it's pretty cute. And look, it's very different than this one. It's smaller. But they're both great. They look good. I like them. Maybe I'll send it to Lillian. I like to make stuff and send it to her because then she writes me letters. All right. So, are you ready? For birds take art. All right. Whoops. <laughs> Failing already. I'm gonna we're gonna talk about red winged blackbirds. They like to live around lakes or where there's water, and they like to make their nests around cattails. Hold it up higher. Okay. Like this. And they're beautiful. Oops. They're really beautiful. They're kind of a big bird. And the daddy birds have, these are called epilots on their shoulders where they're red and yellow. And when they come, they will come to your bird feeder. They're not like robins. Robins are like, like to eat on the ground. These ones like to eat more seeds from plants and stuff. So they'll come to your bird feeder. And if they come, there will be a whole bunch of them. And they will eat like little piggies and eat all your bird seed. And they are loud. Oh, they're so loud. But they're really pretty. I really like them. They are one of my favorite um, songs when they sing because they're so interesting. Okay, do I slide it? Slide it. Yes, slide it. Oh no. I wanted to show you a picture of the mommy blackbird, a uh, red winged blackbird. She looks really different. And see, and God does that so they can be camouflaged and hidden when they're sitting on their nests and taking care of their babies. Tap it or slide it? Okay, look at that nest. There's some babies in there. They make their nest and they kind of hang, so they kind of rock when the wind blows in the reeds. And the daddies and the moms both help feed them. This is my favorite picture. It's so cute. See that little baby bird? And it's little eggs. I didn't get to show you any robin's eggs, but you know the robin's eggs are just so blue. Robins are loud too. I don't think I told you about this morning when I was in, I hadn't got out of bed yet and it was still dark and there was this robin outside singing. He was so loud, but I heard this song once. I always liked it. 
It says, if a robin can praise him, so can you. I always think of that. I can wake up and start praising the Lord. All right, and here's the last thing. This is his song, which does happen to be my favorite. You've probably heard it. Isn't that so melodic? You can hear the geese in the background. The dads are the ones that seem really pretty. The moms don't seem like this. They just kind of cheap. Did you hear that? It's like he's laughing. I never knew they did that until I watched this video. I love that. Okay, so when you're outside playing, you might see some of these or you might hear them. Oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to sit outside and listen to them. Okay, I'm so glad we got to do this. This was so fun for me and I love you and I will see you soon. Bye.